audio. I had to mute my tab because I had sound in my ear really loud. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Thursday Nights. We are once again back to Act 2 in Cthulhu. We were away last week um, with Starfinder due to illness and children and all that wonderful stuff. Can people hear me? I don't have the sliders moving on my on my software. Can you hear me in the chat? Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. You can hear me? Perfect. Um, yeah, so welcome back, back to Act 2 Cthulhu. We're continuing the Shadows of Atlantis campaign. We just wrapped up Vienna last time, and we are going to Rome, Italy, for the next section of this. Does anybody speak Italian here? Speak Latin. Do I speak Latin? I don't on. think so. Oh, this will be fun. I speak Latin, but don't worry, it's fine. I, I can, as a, as a polyglot, it's fairly easy for me to... <laughs> interpret that. i will say uh latin will probably come in handy here but uh italian will also be a benefit between our two linguists we don't have italian nope mm. english german and arabic mm. Mm. okay uh let's do our table everybody can introduce their characters and we also got an advance after the last section so everybody know what you took for your advance jeff you're up first with pavel I'm, I am Pavel Voracek. Hello, hello from uh, Carpathian Mountains, Europe. Very friendly man, spiritual leader, occultist, walker of dreams. He travels the world both in the physical form, but also in the, in, in, in the alternative, in the dreams. Uh, he is linguist, polyglot, speaks many languages, uh, and uh, has a very wonderful friend named Gregor, who is very good at picking locks and many other things. Uh, so very fun. Uh, I also have seen things I probably shouldn't have, and I have access to uh, so, uh, druidic powers that come into play sometimes. Uh, and uh, I have debated on what to take because uh, I do feel like Pavel is somewhat of a face character. So I thought about like taking charm, but I decided to go and just max out my insight at 12 because it is my uh, it is my spell casting stat and it does go into a lot of things like observation tests and things like that. So I was like, it felt like the most appropriate thing to use. So it's max at 12. And hopefully I will I will be better at casting spells because my spells hurt <laughs> very badly. <laughs> they hurt me just as much as anyone else. You, yes. you know, over on the um the Modifius Discord, someone else was asking about like how is this handled? How do you guys do that in the the last adventure we ran? And then I went back and thought about it because they were like, How are they gonna get on the Zeppelin? And I was like, Oh, we use teleport a lot. Jeff yeah. Jeff just <laughs> used teleport to solve a lot of problems in that yes. that playthrough. And it most drained groups... me significantly. <laughs> Ooh, I was nearly dead from it. It was fairly bad. Most most groups probably don't have someone who has teleport in their party. Yeah. yeah so it's very it useful. Solved a lot of problems. <laughs> uh Megan. Megan has returned and is back as a Ruby. I have. So I am Lieutenant. Ruby McKay from uh, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, she's a waitress uh, in a diner, in a backwater diner, diner in Moose Jaw, where the love of her life, Roger, walks in. And yeah, she was quite happy with her life um, as, a, as a waitress. And until, you know, Roger came in and that was it. He decided to go to England. So naturally, Ruby followed. And uh um, it's a bit, it's a bit weird because backstory for last game was after this one. So, um, long story short, a building fell on us and, uh, Roger passed, um, and Ruby was sent to, um, a military hospital where, um, she recovered miraculously, like not, not a scratch on her, uh, where everybody else in the building died. Um, and yeah, she decided to learn her her craft as a nurse as a way to get back um, and I took resilience because Ruby was at one and quite frankly <laughs> you know like uh, a, a, raw, a, a misplaced thumb knife could have killed her in the past a misplaced <laughs> thumb knife well said well said I like that so I thought I'd give her a little more oomph there you go a little beefier uh all right Aaron can you tell us about Leopold ah Leopold Brun, or Leo to his friends, is a psychic of some 
raw talent. He was raised in a school in Munich where both his mother and his father were instructors, for they too are powerful psychics. Then in 1933, his mother had a premonition and they left in the night and fled to England. It was only after that that they realized that the school itself is actually a breeding ground for the Nachtwolf. He has since decided to dedicate himself to assisting the Western powers against particularly the Nachtwolf and the Black Sun and by extinction the evil that is growing in Germany that his mother has sensed. He is a competent telepath and telekinetic. And for my advance, uh, I bumped up his will to 12. So now that he's dueling 12 insight and 12 will, he's a mental powerhouse, physically a little weak, but mentally pretty tough. And he still can't shoot a gun to save his life. (laughs) All right. So it's the average goon is your your arch enemy. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, and finally, we have Jeremy playing Jonathan, our proto-Captain America. Yeah, um, Sergeant Jonathan Morris, career soldier, head knocker. I died from a country once, allegedly, didn't stick, experimental procedures and all that. Sure, I'm a deathly shade of pale, the eyes glow red from time to time, but, you know, I don't have the insight that these other guys do, but... I do have the physical stats to back up what I want to do, which is break your face with my shield. In line with that, I chose hard as nails. So I'm even harder to hurt now. I have seven soak. It's ridiculous. I could probably take a tank shot once. Uh, I love yeah. this game. <laughs> 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 like the Homer Simpson thing, the cannonball shot into stomach. See if it hurts you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting if you fought the uh, that knocked wolf trooper again. Mm. Without the sword. Without like the sword. Build. Yeah. I don't know. That sword made the difference. Did help. Okay. Uh, totally try it. Whew. So what happened last session? Last session, we split the party. And it was mostly Ruby and Pavel in the Sphinx Reading Club trying to find out any information they could about um, the Dr. Ehrlichman. I think Mm -hmm. (laughs) that was his name, Ehrlichman. Yes, he's the one who sent us on all this, him and his his, uh, fiance. Uh, And you met uh, Mr. Fuchs, Gotthold Fuchs, who is the suspected killer of Ehrlichman. You also found some information pertaining to orders, German orders in the area, that of the Noctwolf within his desk. Um, you found a note <laughs> finger pointing and pinpointing that he was ordered to kill Ehrlichman. So it's kind of like, hey, all signs point to him being the bad guy. You guys went that night to the cemetery to go uh, try and follow the clues and try to find uh, whatever it was that Ehrlichman had buried there. Uh, you did locate his diary, and he found a black stone statue. But uh, Fuchs, got hold Fuchs, was there to to try and intercept that. Uh, Ruby kind of fumbled around and was taken hostage. But um, we'll say Jonathan made sure that uh, everything was okay after you know bashing in the head of two two of the the thugs and um Fuchs unfortunately fled into the night uh, along with one of his other thugs and uh you guys decided to take the diary and the black stone statue and continue on the search i was gonna read the just kind of like the high view uh what you gleaned from the diary just to remind us all so Ehrlichman began translating the Black Stone, trying to trace the ancient origins of the Germanic peoples. There appears to be some sort of powerful ancient artifact that was split up in antiquity and the parts hidden in five far-flung locations scattered across the globe. One of these locations is the Eternal City itself, Rome, which we are headed to. The artifacts are reportedly from one of the from the lost civilization of Atlantis. A German expedition has recently brought back a manuscript from Tibet that corroborates the information found on the Black Stone. 
and Ehrlichman is convinced that someone within the Warmarkt is determined to collect the artifacts and intends to use them as the basis of weapons research for the Third Reich. So you took this. Uh, Gisalia wanted the diary back of her deceased uh, deceased uh, uh, fiance, but you said no, no, and you fled. <laughs> you fled Vienna. You're like ah, because she is. She is part of German military intelligence, not necessarily the, the Nazis, but she is German military. So, but you guys decided to leave. Things were also getting really dicey and hot in Vienna at this point. It is uh, late summer of 1939 and war is like on the verge of breaking out there. And uh, foreigners, especially English foreigners, are not the most uh, welcome there right now. So you guys decided to board a train and head to Rome. You're also given a note from section d before you left i'll share that with you in the game and we can we can try to decipher it together because it's in cursive and it's really hard to read show to players there we go pasquino has lost his voice his dearest lucha lucha Zira, i don't know it's italian names they're gonna have lots of fun pronouncing names uh is concerned for his health there are too many sausages in the party. Please come home and help your sister. She cannot run the family restaurant alone. Lucharezza. I'll go with that. Pasquino and Lucharezza. So you guys have that as a clue. There wasn't a lot of details when you received that, they were, uh, but it was sent to section D. Now on your train ride from Vienna to Rome, you did get some more reports and some more information from section D on the way there in regards to this note. You were provided some information further along the way at certain stops. There would be telegrams waiting for you with more details. So it turns out that these names on there are of two Section D um, members. They're, they're code names of agents of theirs in Rome. So you also had a chance to study Ehrlichman's notes and his diary a little bit further. You did some reading on the train on the way there on what he had written about Rome itself and what he had discovered. So I'll read that to you as well. There are snippets of the legend of the founding of Rome, including... A nice, a flight from Troy, the rescue of the twins by Tiburnius, and the slaying of Remus by his brother, and sketches of the famous she-wolf statue suckling the infant twins. The notes also contain sketches of an unusual pyramid, much taller and less squat than the familiar Egyptian types. Alongside the pyramid are the words Cestius or Remus? Question mark. Porta San Paolo, or Lost White Tomb of Romulus, Borgo slash Vatican, Nubian, not traditional Egyptian. That's what's written there. Those are the words that are written below this pyramid. Beneath that is a brief discourse on what pyramids represent, including the world tree, the axis mundi, the link between heaven and earth, and a drawing of St. Peter's Square and its obelisk. So that was what you were able to glean from his notes that he had written about Rome in his diary on the way there. Any questions? Who do I punch? <laughs> Many more than I can come up with right off the top of my head. So, <laughs> yes. To, to, can you share what that note with us? Hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask the same thing, actually. <laughs> A lot to keep track of. Bear with me. Yes, there is a lot there to keep track of. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste the words, and I will put it in our Discord cool. chat for us to look at, and then we can. I'll I'll transfer it into the game later. There you go. It's in the Discord. Awesome. Thank you. Uh so that's what he had written about it. So we'll pick up here. Rome is huge. This is as you arrive in Rome. On the train, Rome is huge, sprawling, confusing city. Thankfully, the quartermaster, Captain Appleby, sent a map with your requ requisitions. I gotta zoom in here. I'm getting old. This is hard to read. <laughs> Here's what you've been told. Pasquiano and Lucharesa are code names for two Section D agents in Rome, named after the city's famous talking statues. Something has obviously gone wrong in the Eternal City, and given the lack of subtlety in the message... Lucharessa is desperate for help, 
Pasquino has apparently disappeared, and going off the less than sophisticated sausages reference, there has been a sudden increase in German activity in Rome that threatens British operations there, if not investigated further. They're your most likely contacts in the city regarding the artifact. According to Strang, they were operating out of place, out of a place called Carvero, <laughs> Carlaveros, a stationer's and art supply shop in the Via della Madonna dei Monti, not far from the Forum. And that is where we will begin. So there is a Section D cover building here. That's what they're operating out of. You have directions to go there. You know that these two names, the uh, Lucharesa and the uh, Pasquino, are Section D agents. Uh, you're also supplied their real name. So Lucharesa is Sabella Zanetti. That is their real name. And Pasquino is Niccolo Filippi, or goes by the nickname Nicky. Those are their real names. And you've been provided that information as well. Uh, it's currently late August, early September. Uh, the war has broken out where you have left. Uh, so British sentiment in that region and in this region is not mm, openly displayed. Uh, you guys are not not very welcome whenever you speak with Eng not necessarily like British or English accents, just English in general. You're not well received. You're going to find here. And uh, you want to avoid any trouble with the black shirts of the OVRA, which is like the uh, Italian like secret police that are currently patrolling the streets. It is, of course, under the control of Mussolini and the government right now. And tensions are high. So we're going to start. You're just getting off the train. Let's kick on the sirenscape. We'll get some sounds going here for the background, the ambiance. Where do we want to go? What do we want to do? Yeah, supply stores, I suppose. This uh, Carlo Veros is probably the most place to start. Yes. Uh, this is probably the best opportunity for us to start our investigation. Perhaps we should try to stick to the German tongue, if possible, while we are here. Based on what we are hearing from our higher ups. Yes, that should be no problem for me. Uh, we'll just, we'll just, um, we'll just walk behind you, I suppose. Are you Smile, still look pretty. Are you still using the baby cover? Do you still have the uh, the bassinet? And you're pushing around the shield. And yeah, I mean, she put so much work into this. Thanks. It goes all for you. What can I say? I well, you're can... the best. If you would like, I can attempt to once again link our minds. As long as we stay close together, you would then be able to understand what is going on through my mind. As as long as it's not too taxing. No, I have fortified myself against these minor inconveniences quite well. And I think that would be a wonderful idea. It's a great idea. All right, so that's going to be CS against observation skill. Insight. And I need two successes. I remember starting fresh, we got no momentum down there. I've got my threat. Oh, there's four of you. I get five threats. Uh, oh. So we get fresh do momentum. We, Pardon me, we, Sorry, do we have our fortune points? Again? Oh, yeah, you get all your fortune points back because this is considered a new leg of the journey. So go ahead and give yourself all your fortune points back for this section for all of Rome. Nice. Did, you want, um, did you want Aaron and I to do like the binding stuff with our mantle? Technically, we, we yeah, should be, we should be. every day. Yeah, rolling, before. Yeah. After we wake up, because yeah. it, once you go unconscious or asleep, you... Uh... Yeah, bond with your mantles, please. All right. Okay, before getting off, off train, yes, Gregor and I... Gregor and I have our own cabin, and we, we, talk, we stare at each other. Remember, we have staring contests across the very large log that I wear around neck. That is mantle. 
Uh, so for Pavel, who is a traditionalist caster, uh, that means he's got to roll insight survival. It's a difficulty zero, Matt. So yeah. it's just like, I, I think it's like, I get it. this is, I'm not sure if this is momentum that Aaron could end up using in his cast or not. But Well, for this scene, I'll give it to you. It will go, you'll lose some after this scene. This will be its own little scene that's playing out. Right. I, it's the same for me as a traditionalist. The psychic is also a traditionalist. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't get any momentum, so... Uh... <laughs> wow! <laughs> Woo! Am I, am I getting threat? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Getting threat. Okay. I'm not going to have my mantle get complicated. Here, yeah, I was so... going to say, that mm. could be really bad for you if we want to introduce a complication. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't. Not, not, not with preparing my mantle for the day. So, but I did succeed. So we got one momentum. You get two threat. So Jeff, you didn't succeed. So what does that mean by not succeeding on your mantle? Just that we don't. I don't get any, uh, any momentum from it. Um, okay. There's no. It's a, oh, it's like a, it's a difficulty zero. zero. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. I think it's just a way. I mean, like, it's a way. Momentum to... is so important to spell casting. Like, it's really hard to cast without spell without momentum. Gotcha. Okay, so you connect with your mantle, you hit the streets of Rome, Italy, and you start to follow the direction. So you've been sent a map of the city by Section D. You have a name of this, this cover building, yeah, this, this stationer's art shop and supplies. It is known as Carlaveros. And uh, you start heading your way there. Is there anything you want to do or see on your way there? Do you want me to make that telepathy roll real quick to see if I link our minds successfully? Yes, go ahead. I will go ahead and spend that one point of momentum to give myself a third die that I got off of my uh, my uh, setting my mantle. Sure. And I don't make it. You guys, I do not make it. I needed two successes and I only got one. You try to speak with your mind to the others and the others... You know, Hear nothing. They look at you, just kind of shrug. Like, Did you hear that? Did, and, and oh no! Hold on. I, I rolled it wrong. That was against agility. It didn't. Oh, okay. I didn't switch. I didn't switch it over to inside. I was like, "There's no way my target number's 11. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is inaccurate. Some mental block. Of Jonathan just think, if my shield was better. a baby. What <gasps> I mean? Oh my goodness! Woo. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so threat to you, and uh, it still doesn't work. <laughs> But it was I'll, a very I'll... rough train ride. <laughs> very rough. Very you rough get train out. Ride. Yeah, yeah. There's there's uh there's brown shirts wandering around all over the train station, check people's IDs, going through bags. But, but I'm you... okay. I, I I I soaked all the, the the rain from my failure, my absolute abject failure. But <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Or black shirts, says Shane, not brown shirts. Black shirts. Um, yeah, just keep getting those. Keep rolling those for me, please. My best. Because I didn't get a lot at the end of the last adventure. <laughs> um, okay, so you guys hit the streets of Rome. It's busy. It's bustling. It is, like I said, it's late sem September. Or late August, early September. So there's quite a few people here. Like, Rome is always busy with tourists. So there are quite a bit of tourists here as well from other European uh, nations. This is quite a, a holy place to go to for many, so lots of people make the pilgrimage here to visit, despite the looming threat uh, hanging over Europe right now. The threat of possibly entering another large-scale war breaking out. But you guys follow... Go ahead. Question. I can't... I can't... Jeff doesn't remember this. St. Peter's Square, is that Vatican City or is that Rome? I don't... So I'm no, St. I think St. Peter's Square is right outside of Vatican City. I don't think it's part of the country of Vatican City. I think it's still because technically I, in Rome. There was a sketch of St. Peter's Square and its obelisk uh, within the notes that we we got. That's one thing that was referenced in here. In terms of other places to see, perhaps I don't know why that would be referenced here, but it seems to be of interest. And since we are nearby so perhaps yeah, it would bear a very striking s similarity to a, a pyramid that was more slender as was described as well yes but perhaps this is something we should put in um, a list of things to do and not necessarily the first thing on the uh, list 
but uh, let us see if we can make contact with our associates first and find out what they know about and about the increase in the German activity and how that will slow us down. Yes, this sounds very okay. All right. So you guys make your way through the streets. You're using your map to find your way there. The streets are very busy, hustling and bustling. It is early morning when you arrive, so it's roughly 7 a.m. by the time you get off the train and you hit the streets. So everybody's getting up and heading out for the day. Streets are filled up. It is a weekday. It is a Thursday that you arrive in Rome. And you guys make your way to where the Section D office, we'll say, is. As you arrive, it appears the shop is closed. Its front is covered in notices from the OVRA declaring it to be a haven for political undesirables. Uh, there's a, a large wooden sign uh, made of carved wood hanging above the door and it's shaped like a, a, an oak leaf and it reads Carlaveros confirming that this is the right place, but it's hanging slightly askew. Uh, and it looks like an attempt has been made to paint the name out. Somebody painted over it with like white, white paint to cover it up. Uh, the pane of glass in the door looks like it's been smashed out and replaced with a wooden board. And there's still fragments of broken glass visible in the door and underfoot. And there's people milling about. You're standing out there. You're kind of looking at one another. People are looking at you as they walk by. They're looking at the building, looking at you. What What's on either side of this yeah. store? Like, what kind of area is this in? Is it part of a whole bunch of shops? Is yeah. Is it a step alone? No, on either side, there appears to be, um, like, apartments. Like, like li dwellings that people live in. Either the buildings adjacent to it. Uh, I'm I'm gonna see if I can peer inside to see if there's anything in there that I can yeah. see. Yeah, you like you look, you hold your hands up and you look between like the notices. You press your face up against your hands that are looking through, and inside, uh, you can see that the the shop has been completely wrecked, ransacked. Uh, there's paints, like, strewn about out of their tubes. Uh, notebooks, sketch pads, and other pieces of artist equipment are scattered all over the floor. And it looks like several shelves have been dislodged from the, the walls, and there's books laying everywhere. Leo would move on past the building a little bit, and then stop, and just kind of slowly scan around, you know, trying to be circumspect, but see who's watching us watch that building or try to. Sure, you guys have been there for a few moments and or minutes, and you can uh, kind of just like scan and watch the area. We'll do a um, reason observation. Let's kind of take it all in. You kind of lean back against one of the adjacent buildings and watch the people walking by as they come and go and anybody's kind of lingering, all the faces that look at you. Two successes. Yeah, very good, very good. Um, So, you do seem to have caught the attention of a, a man in the area. He's, he's dressed... The best way to put it is almost like a movie detective or gangster. He's got like a double-breasted suit. He's got a bow tie. He's wearing a fedora. He's got his hands in his in, in his pockets, and he's walking by, and he's just he's looking at you. And just something doesn't seem right about him. He seems very out of place, but he seems very interested in you and the the rest of the group. Like as Ruby's peering through the window, he's kind of like you can tell he's making mental note, but he keeps striding after he locks gaze with you. The two of you look at each other. He just kind of smiles, nods, and keeps walking. Is there, um, you said there's people around here? Oh, there's people milling about everywhere. This is this, this a regular street. Yeah. This isn't like some shady, dark alley. There's people all about. Yeah. yeah. 
And are there like people like literally lingering outside the store and whatnot? Or Not like really. Uh, like most people are just walking by. They're 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 doing the daily routines. So they're headed to work, or they're headed to open up a shop, or they're going to school, or the tourists, and they're here to see the sites. There's not much to see around here. There are stores and cafes and such, just not right here. Yeah. Um, Pop will see if he can strike up a conversation with somebody that looks local, um, and we'll kind of like play the you know play the like the tourist card. Be like, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, like uh, I was told, this is place to buy art supplies he's going to speak loud and slow kind of weave in english and latin and stuff like that here and there scusi, to, scusi. like skillsy skillsy uh, what, what, what what has happened to you uh, i love it so you're <laughs> so just some random person walking by so whoever's here that i sw- someone who looks local i don't want like to be like sure yeah tourist person you, you know, like when you travel, you could tell who when someone's local. You could tell when someone's yes, a tourist, another yes. tourist. So yeah, you grab, yes. you grab the arm. Uh, do you want a young lady or a man or what? what, what I do what, not what? want to grab the arm of a young lady, <laughs> man. No, no, thank you. I would like to not grab anybody. I would like to just, you know, sure. close myself we'll in front of them. We'll say, uh... <laughs> Uh, uh, there's a man in his mid twenties walking by. He's got a determined look on his face. It looks like he's headed somewhere with purpose, and you just kind of scoozy, scoozy, and you <laughs> hold out a hand. Oh, welcome, lords and ladies of fate. Thank you for joining us. Uh, he stops and he he looks, and I don't know Italian, so he says, uh, "Can I help you in Italian?" I don't. And I'll, I'll point to the art store and I'll be like, ah, and I'll, you know, I'll speak with my hands and stuff. And I'll just be like, what is, what happened here? What, uh, what is this? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to make some rolls here to see how well he understands you. So, so do we, we have a momentum, right? From Aaron's, Aaron's observation. Uh, I, no, I spent, I spent it. Fa- oh, oh, you spent it. Okay. And we would have oh. lost it between scenes also. No, no, I meant, or I meant just for his observation test. Oh, just did. yes, yeah, you got two successes, right, Aaron? Yep, yeah, I did. Yep. Okay, yeah, you so, have a so momentum. Yep. Real... Okay. okay, so I want to tap into my polyglot ability and try to get into a conversation with him and try to get him to talk, which means I can, even if I don't know the language, I can get the gist of whatever it is he <laughs> says to me. <laughs> that is literally one of the things of polyglot. That's really, really handy. Okay. Plus, I I do know Latin, and there is not a lot of distance between. Okay, there's a little distance. I was gonna say, <laughs> I don't know Latin or Italian, but I'm pretty there's sure there's a, there's you know, a, like a couple of words in Italian, just a bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a rollable power that you uh, you do. No, no. It's just I I if I burn, I spend a momentum and oh. I, get, I I get the gist of any conversation or okay. text that I don't if I don't know the language I can get the gist of it. I don't. I'm you know, like, rolling for him though to understand oh, yeah, you. Yeah. So I'm gonna do okay. that first to see if he understands like what you're asking. Like I know you're using hand motions, but you're looking for something particular. What is that? What did I roll? Seven and nineteen. Yeah, yeah. With that seven. Here, I'll show it on stream also 7 and a 19 he kind he gets like the gist like you're pointing the building you look kind of concerned and he 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 gets like you're you're inquiring and he goes uh he says uh no it was closed it was closed uh, a few days ago uh the black shirts ova they came in here they took it over there's uh spies spies using the the building He's saying this like in fluent Italian, like he's not using like broken English or broken Italian, trying to like. But you're using your your ability to 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 pick yeah. up the gist of it. So something happened here. Recent, it was yeah. very recently, and uh, it came under the suspicion of the government. Is what you're going right. to glean from that? Okay, so grazie, 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 uh, and I like shake his hand and stuff. I'm like grazie, with both hands, and then. Um, yeah, and then I'll just retreat back. And yeah, he's gonna, before he leaves though. He will. He's gonna point at the the sign, the notice from the OVA, and he's gonna point specifically at the OVA, like the word OVA, mm-hmm. uh, OVRA, sorry, OVRA, and just like kind of give you like a warning, like steer, watch out. Well, oh, very grazie, very grazie. Oh yes, yes. And I'll just like look at that. No, 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 no. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And uh, once once I just have that confirmed, I'll, I'll step away. 
find the rest. And of he'll it. he'll be like he and then he one more time he'll just he'll point his eyes and he'll just go kind of like everywhere, point eyes and just kind of like make like a circular motion in the air. Ah, yes. Grazie, grazie, and then I'll back away. And then yeah, uh, yeah. See, he heads back towards wherever he was going. And I'll, I'll fill in who was ever still around sure. uh, in the party. You know, like <laughs> as long as we're not being distinctly eavesdropped on. Yeah. <laughs> Arrivederci. <laughs> Arrivederci. <laughs> oh. If you came back, got... did anybody look at me? Because, like, maintaining eye contact is how you show politeness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Very well. So I'll I'll convey also to uh, Pavel what um, and Sergeant Morris what um, I saw inside as well. We have also picked up someone who may be very interested in our goings on here. The very the man dressed there as a a gangster from the uh, the cinema. He was very interested in us. Feel like mafia man? Where? He has moved off down that way, Lieutenant. I mean, uh, Miss Ruby <laughs> Frolheim. Oh, gosh. I, I know this is super dangerous and everything, but golly, I never thought I'd see an actual gangster in Rome of all places. Sure, I do not know that he is actually a gangster. He is simply dressed very much like they dress in your American cinema. Oh. Okay, well, um, uh, I, I, and very loudly and obnoxiously, I guess we'll have to go somewhere else for our painting supplies. Should we carry on? Now, <laughs> now there are alleyways on either side of this building if you want to investigate down there as should well. We, should we uh, try to... How, how far did you get into the building? Like, did you just see little bits or did we like you know full on search ruby you just saw like the the room like the 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 opening the first room you go into it's like where the, the customers you know it is there is a storefront there and this is where customers would go into and purchase art supplies or go in there and maybe uh get take lessons art lessons so there are back rooms that you can't see into from this this front window we find different way inside perhaps open a window or something Perhaps indeed. Well, I'm going to look at Gregor specifically. But we do know a little lockpick. <laughs> yes, yes. He's it's been True. practicing so much, like on the train. Uh, it, I got yelled at many times because he got loose and broke into people's cabins. But uh, he's a good boy. Uh, sure, I could, uh, we could try this. <laughs> well, what, why don't we continue down a bit and then turn down? Yeah. And yeah to make it not like oh let's just turn here go down a bit farther and, mm -hmm. and uh, come around yeah yeah great plan <laughs> god thanks perhaps it would be best if we spaced ourselves out a little more so just in case somebody decides to come for us we have no opportunity uh, to thwart them from getting the entire group. That sounds excellent. I think I think I'll uh, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead first. So um, she'll uh, she'll like kiss Sergeant Morris's cheek and whisper, saying, "Keep our baby safe," and off um, off I go. I'm calling um, it Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and uh, go down a bit and then um, start turning down and I'm going to try rolling stealthily. Can I move about stealthily, Matt? Well, let's see. Let's see what the dice do, uh, have to say about that. Yes, you can attempt a an agility. No, we're going to do coordination. Coordination here. Stealth. You're going to try to disappear. And you want to go down, what, an alley or something? Or you just want to blend with the crowd? What do you want to do? Um, to, like, walk down and then, yeah, um, uh, duck down duck down an alley without being seen. Sure. Yeah, go ahead and roll me that. It'll take one success. It's quite busy down here. All you need is one success. 
Sorry, uh, stealth coordination. Yeah. That's <laughs> if you had if you had urban stealth, oh, oh my God. no 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 no! If you, had, if, no you had, if you had urban stealth, or would you like to take a complication, or am I getting some more threat? Gosh, oh my gosh! Dude, and we don't have any momentum. <laughs> this happened oh last time too. You tried to stealth <laughs> you know, in the graveyard. So oh my god! This is fun. You gotta love it. Right? No, you know what? We'll do. Fuck, we'll do a complication. Whatever. Let's do it. Okay. Let's get crazy. Yes. <laughs> get <crazy>. Yes. <laughs> All right. So you guys watch Ruby duck down alley. What do the rest of you want to do? So Leo would be going uh, down a different uh, different alley, but trying to box around. But he is not trying to go stealthily. He is just trying to go with the flow of the crowd. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, do you have urban stealth? <laughs> he does not. Damn, this is like Evan's adventure. Uh, uh, Henri would be doing excellent here. Between his tactics and his urban stealth. Uh, we're going to do coordination also. And you're just trying to blend in with the crowd, eh? You're not trying yeah, just... to disappear out of plain sight? Nope, nope. Just Let's trying go with... to... I'll, I'll do tactics for this one. All right, all right. Coordination you know, tactics. So this is uh this is where you see uh, Leo really shine. Leo <laughs> shine. <laughs> Coordination of six tactics of zero. Zero oh, successes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So you don't blend in. You actually stick out like a sore thumb. Maybe you start asking some questions or you speak another language and people turn and look at you. Uh, but you, you don't you don't successfully blend in the crowd. You stick out uh, quite does, a bit. Leo is sticking purely to German, his native language. All right. So, he's... <laughs> so people are looking at you kind of strange. Uh, what, does everybody, what do the other two want to do? Pavel and uh, Jonathan. I'm just going to be gawking. I'm here with my kid. Me and Charlie are seeing the sights. Just looking around, wide-eyed, smiling like a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're just pushing the stroller. You're not trying to hide or anything. You're just, you just you just want to like what circle the seriously. area, or do you want to stand in front of this this uh, building? What do you, uh, what's the approach? Yeah, I'm just gonna look for something that looks big and fancy, but that yep. some idiot American wouldn't know any better, and just wander around. Sure, because I'm not hiding this this stroller. I'm like, who are you kidding? <laughs> Okay, no. so so you're just like wandering around in like any piece of ancient architecture, no matter how menial it is. You're just kind of like, whoa, fascinated looking at it. Wow. Look at that, Charlie. You're looking it's down at the old ship. cobblestone <laughs> at your feet. I bet, I bet this fence is like a thousand years old. Uh, Pavel, what do you want to do? What's your approach here? Uh, Pavel is looking for the most obscured window uh, that he and or Gregor could get through. Meaning, like, most obscured you can from sight. smash? Oh, no, 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 no. Why or teleport. Yeah, maybe, but looking for one that is not... Uh, so, that is, uh, so, like, around back or something? Like, something that's yeah, not so on this main street where there's people just streaming exactly. by constantly? Least, gotcha, yeah, you can go down... Guys. You can go down one of the alleys, and are you trying to be stealth about it, or you just don't care? You're just going to stroll down no, there? No, I'm walking like it is beautiful day in All Italy. You're, it's, you're yeah. moving with a purpose. I'm walking like, oh, what wonderful day it is. This is great. This is great. Okay. You know? So, yeah, you stroll down there, and you get down the alley, and you can you find there are a couple windows in the side of this building. One of them peers into, like, a back room. Again, it's ransacked, and there's, like easels and uh canvases it looks like they've been like uh broken or punched through there's more uh bookshelves have been been uh tossed to the floor and books scattered everywhere uh that you can look into yeah i can like crawl into one of them is it, is it possible it to is a one? small window it looks like you could crack it open from the inside and just kind of like is one of those ones where it just kind of just kind of like um like shifts up and down, so you couldn't open it fully, but it's enough to let the breeze in when it's really hot in the summer. So, and it's maybe 
Ooh, like 24 inches by 24 inches. It's a small window. 24 by 24. Pavel is a very slight man. He's not very big. <laughs> what about like Gregor? <laughs> Gregor's very tiny. Very tiny. So is it is it something that I can open from the outside or does it be open from the inside? It happy you can see the latch on the inside that would have to be okay. moved to okay. slide this thing and then it like pivots in the middle. You know what I mean by that description mm -hmm. where it pivots in the middle and it just kinda opens on the top and yeah. bottom and you always have that pain. And is it is it is it clear? Like like It is clear glass. Clear? Yeah, yeah. It's like muddy. It's like you know how glass used to be back in the day, so it's kinda like muddy and distorted to look through, but it's clear and you can see through it. So it's impossible for me to climb into it if I send Gregor around to open it from the inside? Hmm. Uh, yes, but he might find other doors to get in to open. Okay. <laughs> I like how we're talking will, about a Marvin opening door. I will pull out Gregor. Listen, we've established several truths. He's, he's not just any Marvin. He's the smartest one in his class. I'll just get out Gregor in front and I'll hold him in my hands like baby like beautiful baby boy, oh yeah his, will say. his head's darting around he's taking in the sights yeah, this yeah. is his first time to roam right right we will get you cappuccino later now i need you to <laughs> go inside find find a way for us to get into so like big window or vent or door someone that you can get and be careful don't get caught And uh, I'm gonna spend a fortune point and say, like, this is. I'm just gonna okay, you're just making it happen. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Yep. So you spend a fortune point. Gregor starts scuttling down this alley away from you, just running full bore. He's sniffing, looking around. He sees like a little crack in the building here and there, and he kind of pops in and disappears, and then pops back out and continues on in his little search. And he darts around the corner, like around the back of this building, and you don't see her here from him for a little while and you're looking around and you're watching and you're taking in the sights and the sounds you see people moving around you can see jonathan staring aimlessly down at his feet uh in amazement at the cobblestone underneath them and then all of a sudden you can hear this like little tap 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 tap, tap on the glass and gregor's there and he's like moving the latch <laughs> and he oh. kind of pushes the little <laughs> window open Okay, okay. And then he just kind of starts running in a circle and like kind of motioning you for him, you to like follow him. And he's like running to the back of the building to towards that sure. direction. Of course I will do what he says. He's the goodest boy. He's the goodest boy. You go to the back and there's a door back there, a wooden door. And um, it is kind of slightly askew. And Gregor's sitting down at the bottom of it, uh, you know, between the crack and the and the door frame, looking up at you on his hind legs. Oh, oh, we are going to get you a double cappuccino later. <laughs> do, do I see anybody else uh, from the party? Like, uh, from this angle? From wow. the party? <laughs> I guess you don't see Jonathan. <laughs> Make me an, uh, uh, an insight observation. You can use sight if you have a... Specialization in sight. On his only one success. Uh, you see Leopold. Okay. So I will. And he's standing out like a sore thumb. He's like walking into like, trash cans or whatever's back there <laughs> and kind of like yeah. trying to blend in, but really not. Okay. Leo. I will do like, you know, one of those whistles that, you know, it's like, like that and see if I can get his attention with whistle. You're like Marcus a few times. Marcus Brody in the streets. Yes. Is that in Cairo? So, Is that the first one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I will, I will whistle to see if I can get Leo so he sees that the door is open to the back. Sure. So, uh, Leo, you hear you hear a whistle and you look over and Pavel's standing there and Gregor's in his arms being <laughs> cradled like a baby. Good boy. Leo... Leo, you know, moves directly towards them. All right. Uh, Ruby, you're making your way down your alley, and you're kind of, like, looking behind you, and you kind of keep looking over your shoulder, and it's quiet back here. You've gotten away from the, the hustle and bustle of the main street. You can barely hear the people and the noise down there. And you turn a corner, and all of a sudden, you're greeted by the sight. You almost bump into 
that well-dressed man in the in the suit that uh, Leo was talking about earlier with the fedora on. Oh, oh, gosh, uh, I, I'm, 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 so, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm terribly lost. I don't know where, where I, where I am. I was, I was on the main street and I find myself here. Do you speak English? He's got, he's got a little pencil mustache and he grins. He goes, ah, I almost called you Frau Langs. I'm so used to playing Germans. Uh, he goes, ah, <laughs> ah, foreigner. Uh, come with me. I can, I can help you out. <laughs> oh gosh I am so thankful I, I, I honestly don't know how I got well I am here I am here um, uh, with with, with uh, m- my family could you help direct me off to back off to the main street please <laughs> okay are you going to lie what do you mean you can make a reason <laughs> I'm of my family uh, uh, you can make a reason <laughs> persuasion. He's very uh, attached to that fake baby. Uh, <laughs> so attached. If you want. And it is going to be too difficulty. Oh, dear God. <laughs> you do it. This man saw you all in the streets before. <laughs> he was watching you. He was casing you. He's no, now got one of you alone thanks to a complication. Thanks, Megan. Welcome. I'm... I'm more than happy. Um, so what did you want me to roll? Um, a reason persuasion. Jeez. <laughs> Two successes. Fuck. Sorry. <laughs> oh. I like how the stress is coming through. Uh, not just for your character, but for the player. Yeah, yeah it's real. <laughs> so we're going so to break somebody out of an Italian jail. That's fine. You can do that. I thought you could. He kind of like undoes the button on his coat and he pulls it back and you can see that there's a revolver under his arm. A Beretta. And he also takes out a pair of handcuffs. And he says, I am an OVRA agent. We are aware of your presence here. And we are interested in what you're doing in Italy. And he asks you to turn around and he's going to cuff you. Do, Do I have to oblige? Uh, what do you want to do? It's up to you. He's, he's, he's showed you he has a gun, and he's... Well, like, um, you know, um, I'll, I'll make like I am uh, going to uh, put my arms around, but I'm actually going to, like, grab my trench knife. Not my... He <laughs> <laughs> can't do anything. Although it is very impressive and handy and whatnot, it can't do anything. So, yeah, I'm going to try and... French knife and... So you're going to pull a knife on him? Oh my yeah. god. I am. Yes. <laughs> on I'm Oh so my excited. goodness. On an Italian... <laughs> okay. We are, we are <laughs> kicking Italy off. <laughs> oh wow. Yes. We're in the alley, right? There's nobody here. right? We're going to do this mission up. Delta Green style. Yeah? yeah? We're going to be a whole different group of people when we're done with this mission. <laughs> so this is like... They're like the, the eyes and ears of Italy right now. They have a, like a network of spies and informants and... Um, Specifically, <laughs> that of uh, people engaging in anti-fascist behavior. This could be considered such a crime. <laughs> uh, okay. By loitering in a... Ooh. In- um. Hmm, 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 You don't have any momentum, do you? No, but I do have fortune points. Would you like to... Because I'm going to say here, he's ready for you. He's, he's showing the gun... I'm like I know normally this goes to the player, but this is kind of a toss up here. If you want to use a fortune, you can, and I'll totally give this to you. You can actually, actually no. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna as I turn around to um uh to uh for him to handcuff my um hands. I'm going to stomp on his foot as hard as I can with my high heel shoe and run away. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, make me, make me your attack. I'm going to, I'm going to try to avoid this. I'm going to give him the opportunity to try and move his foot. So go ahead and roll an attack. It's going to be, I don't know, agility fighting. Hand to hand if you have it. We'll use that. Difficulty is going to be two. You're going for a smaller target here. He's coming at you. You're going to try specifically to get his foot. Yeah, agility fighting. 
two successes, and he's going to try to avoid oh. it. Okay. Uh, he doesn't. You stomp down on his foot. And he ah, screams out in pain, and he rears back, which gives you the opportunity to start running. Yeah, I'm going to run away. You start to run, he's going to fire his gun at you. That's okay. Let him fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was. Uh, firing gun. What? It's coordination, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Ruby. Fighting coordination. I'm going to spend a threat. I'm going to die on there. <sighs> Let's no. do it. Bring it on. This looks so weird. And he <laughs> fires at you, and all of a sudden you hear a gunshot ring out and echo down this alleyway, and you feel, oh, something hard and hot. <laughs> all of a sudden... Ah, and you drop to the ground. Yep. It's painful. It hurts. How much armor do you have? It does four damage, no effects. And it's all good. Um, so does this knock me to the ground, yeah? No, it's like, game effects-wise, the qu qualities on the weapon, it doesn't knock you to the ground. I'm just... For dramatic effect, we're saying it does, but it didn't. You're, you're still on your feet. Uh, you took four damage. How are you for armor and all that good stuff? And So, you know, one, one of my talents is out of harm's way and or sorry is is second wind and i can spend a fortune point and as a free action i regain all my stress and i nearly shrug it off and continue bolting down the alleyway and to safety i'm guessing it's safety okay Okay, so you you flee, so you can hear people scream in the streets, and you just kind of like get a second when you keep running, and he shouts, "Stop! Stop! I'll shoot again!" And you break into the uh, streets, and there are people screaming and panicking. Jonathan looks up and sees you standing there. There's blood on your coat, Jonathan. Yep. You see this? You heard the gunshot, Jonathan. Pavel, Leo, you also heard the gunshot ring out near a nearby alley but uh, not immediately next to yours. And you can hear panic in the streets, but you're in the back room of this building. I met the gangster. We got to get going. <laughs> My friend, it does appear that our associates have provided us a distraction so that we may search the building. It's yes, very, very crafty of them. So, like, it's me and Leo and Jonathan and Ruby, right? Like, that's how it's split right now? Yes. Yes, it's like okay. Vienna all yes. over again. <laughs> this, you right. very quick. <laughs> this happened once before, deja vu. Why did he shoot you? I want to break his face. No, 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 no. It's just we should just go. Let's go. Take let, let, let's just go. It's a gangster in the okay, suit. I'm fine, I'm fine. Let's just go. People are screaming, running. People see the blood on you and they you hear more screaming and panic. Let's join the crowd and let's get lost. Come on, I'm okay, really, honestly. Let's go. Right. I'll take off my jacket and drape it over her to hopefully cover the area that's bleeding. Because she was able to avoid having an actual injury with her talent. Maybe it's not that bad a wound and we can just cover it for now. Right. Because you came back all your stress, right? Yep. So you're not, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's still, we're going to say it grazed you. Because it's still hit, technically. Okay. Um, sure. You guys want to roll me a stealth roll? Jesus. Urban right. stealth would be really handy right now. Okay. Urban. Let's do <laughs> coordination stealth. Jesus. Uh, two successes. <laughs> and you got it. So how are you going to do this? What does this look like, Ruby? You got it. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> 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 that was okay. Okay, so um, so every time I try to stealth, <laughs> every time you're just not a stealthy guy. <laughs> but you you gotta I should be. So, I'm but you fifty fifty. You got a, You got a critical success there. Do you want to give me the threat? All right. Because it's two successes. You're one. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to. We can just make the situation worse. Oh, I won't. I'm. <laughs> I'm prepared because you got a critical success, but you got a critical failure. So I can take the two threat. You can then have your two successes off the critical success. 
Alright, fine. Alright, so how do the two of you blend into the crowd as this panic just erupts all around you? Well, you know, you know putting the jacket around her, we kind of walk through town. Oh no, we cringe, we're scared. Oh god, what's going on? Help, help! Foreigners! Oh, I guess I can't, I'll just scream. <laughs> and, uh, no, we'll, um, uh, like... May, may, make our way uh, in conjunction with the crowd um kind of yeah sure so yeah they're panicking they're streaming in every direction and you just kind of bunch in with them and just kind of shoulder to shoulder disappear we'll say and you can hear screaming and shouting there's no more gunshots per se but uh, there's a lot of battalion being thrown around all around you and you understand none of it Absolutely. so I'm gonna I'm gonna also grab one of the ba- one of the baby's blankets and uh, pop it around my head into a babushka. Okay. Okay. Nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Let's cut to Leo and Pavel inside the old headquarters. All right. So there's a back room here. There's like um. Looks like there may have been an office back here. There's also a cot in the corner, and this has all been ransacked. There's the cot's been cut and its contents spilled out all over the floor. And this leads into that back room that you were looking into, Pavel. And then that in turn leads to the front, the storefront. Mm. We'll scour this room, look for anything. Looks like it's been ransacked pretty thoroughly, but it's possible they missed something. I mean, would we know of anything like a particular way that uh, members of the of Section D, you know, uh, have dead drops or mm-hmm. false locations in, in safe houses that we would have an idea where they would stash something? Yeah, well, let's let's make a roll, shall we? So I'm just changing the sounds because we're no longer in the streets here. Bear with me as we sirenscape. <laughs> Yeah, so go ahead and uh, let's do... You qu- we can do an insight observation test. Sight, specifically, if you have that. It'll be a difficulty of one. Three successes. Holy two for crap. me And two for you. So take your bonus momentum, fellas. Uh, nice. <laughs> so, like I said, the, the living quarters behind... Uh, slash office behind have been thoroughly looked through just like everything else uh but back here you didn't see this as much up front but in this little back room you find that there are like oak leaves like similar to that in the shape of the sign outside this building a uh, cut out of paper it's scattered all over the floor of this room you can while you're going through these you find that there are also a lot of postcards strewn about amongst them. And it looks like they mostly highlight tourist attractions here in Rome. It's things such as the Colosseum, the Castel Santa Sant'Angelo, St. Peter's Basilica. Uh, and there also seem to be quite a few oddities among these as well on the postcards. And that of um, damaged statues. Perhaps they were looking for one of the pieces that of the artifact that we are searching for. Yes. Is there any writing on the postcards? Oh my god, my voice just went in order. Pavel Voracek. There, there are there are names written on them. Um and you start looking at these these kind of like damaged statues, and you look at the backs of some of them, and then some start to click. One says uh Marforio. Another one says Pasquino. Uh, another one says Madama Lucharesa. And as you're kind of looking at these, you're, you're kind of putting names together. Like these were the code names of some of these Section D agents that were here. You noticed a you notice a tourist guide uh, laying on a table beside the cot of Rome. Okay. What has anything been marked off inside of the? Uh the guide is like if there are any sort of crib notes especially on the specific <laughs> locations that are on the postcards yes so you can go specifically and you can find these statues very easily 
uh, in here. And they are actually well thumbed, uh, the grouping of them. There's actually six of them around uh, Rome, and these are known as the singing statues. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. There's also a note on the page with the one uh, Madonna, uh, what did I say? Madonna Lucharessa or Madama Lucharessa. And there's a note scrawled there in pen that says, follow the leaves. L-E-A-V-E-S. When we look at these leaves, do they, these paper leaves, do they give any kind of, is there any kind of strange markings on them or tick marks or anything that, you know, as a unit may be, you know, make a map or determine some sort of coordinates? Um, no. I will use your rolls from before with your success and everything. I'm going to say no. It doesn't seem like there's anything on or messages or codes or anything like on these leaves. You could make me, either of you could make me a reason academia uh, role, specifically history if you have it as well. One success as you're flipping through this tourist book and looking at the leaves and looking at these the write-ups of these talking statues. Two successes. Two successes. Alright. Give yourself momentum. We just need one there. So flipping through here, there's a sorry, what was that? Oh, you got one? Uh, just one for me. Perfect. You're flipping through, you're reading, you're reading about these talking statues, and you're kind of getting into a little bit of Rome history. Not related to the leaves themselves, but you do find a passage uh, that talks about um, the ancient Sibyl of Kume, author of the Sibylan Books of Fate, and Arenus Guide to the Underworld, used lo- oak leaves to record her prophecies. That's the only thing you can find that's somewhat has any information about leaves. You can't find anything particularly with these statues. Now, you know these statues um, are scattered throughout Rome. They're not all in one place. Some of them are actually quite near one another. But um, obviously the two that really stick out are Pasquiano and uh, Lucharessa. Perhaps we may need to both look at these uh, statues, Pavel, and also perhaps take a look at the prophecies that are mentioned here. Perhaps these leaves will lead us in the direction we need to go. That is, of yes. course, after we find Sergeant Morris and Lieutenant McKay. <laughs> of course. We're probably in jail cell would be my first <laughs> guess, but perhaps somewhere else. We should take everything that we can with us. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm. It's Vienna all and, over again. This, these are the only things of interest you find. You got this tourist guide now that can help guide you to these statues and their locations. You got this clue of follow the leaves, and there's these paper cut leaves, oak leaves scattered everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have, you know, that the, the the Section D agents used names of some of these right. these statues. One thing, looking at the tourist map, that kind of like stands out when you're like plotting out where all these statues are. One thing that kind of stands out is the um, the Lucharesa one is located right outside one of the main doors into uh, Mussolini's current headquarters in the Palazzo Venezia. So it might be a little dangerous to get over there. That one is a, is a little dicey looking at the map and where it's located. Sounds like a perfect place for Ruby and uh, Jonathan to go. <laughs> We could find the creative means of, of ingress, but that is a problem for later. We should collect everything. We should v- evacuate gunshots. Well, here it's possible more of the RA are coming to this scene. Would we have? Would we have had? A, would we have had like set up? I mean, we're all like agents, right? Yeah. Which, we would we would we have like a rendezvous point that we would probably give to each other? I, I think that's reasonable, right? Totally. We would have discussed beforehand <laughs> hey. about uh, a reasonable hotel to, or a safe hotel to uh, go back to. Hey, you know what? We're sitting on like a pile of momentum. We could introduce a truth that like every new city you go to, you know, you have, yeah. there's, there's a standard safe place you guys all uh, established and you would fall back to if anything goes bad. We could do something like that. That yep. sounds like a good we could introduce, yeah. and, and then, uh, 
ongoing. This will now be a thing like every uh, whatever you want to make it in every mm -hmm. city or town will be your place you go to to meet up. All right. So I'll take our momentum down by two and we create a truth that we have established uh, this policy protocol in advance. And what is this going to be like a church? A government building, like let's well, think of things that are going to be in like every city. A a, a police station, probably not you guys. <laughs> no, We're not going to go there. Uh, perhaps, perhaps a cemetery because uh, <laughs> people they expect people to go to cemeteries. Yet no one wants to talk to anyone in cemeteries because you do not want to invade their grief. That's good. Idea. That's excellent. And like the the like centralized. Uh, cemetery of wherever we are. Sure. Centralized could be the close. Whatever you guys want to do. Now, you all maps because Section D did supply you with maps of Rome when you arrived. So it's not like uh, Ruby and Jonathan are, don't know where to go. And the Pavel and Leopold, you have maps. Plus, you also have the tourist guide, which has filled with lots of maps and lots of information on Rome. If we are lucky, they have made it to the cemetery and are awaiting our arrival. If not, perhaps perhaps the police station may be something we may have to investigate. With the Tool of Lamb, it's really 50-50. So, what is hope for best expect worse? If we do not see any bodies on the street who have been bashed in half by the Sergeant Moss's shield, then perhaps they have escaped. I, he is really demonstrating a significant amount of self-control, more than I would have expected from The Yankee Doodles are very, very emotional, you know, very quick to anger. And this you can't hear this, you're not there. <laughs> The Canadian, she is very, very nice, but she terrifies me much more than even the Sergeant Morris. I completely agree with that. <laughs> yes, very much. <laughs> Sergeant Morris, if he wants to do something to you, he will he will lumber very slowly at you with very menacing face and weapon. With Ruby, I worry she will stab me in my sleep with little thumb knife and I won't be able to breathe anymore when I wake up. The last time that I made a telepathic contact with her, there were some very dark places in her mind that I was very afraid to go. There are very peculiar dreams in uh, Sergeant Morris's uh, brain. I worry sometimes about significant black blockage here and there. He is repressing something. Uh, possibly for the best. I don't know. <laughs> We just talk so much trash about the other two. <laughs> two of you. Like, and meanwhile, they're in the cemetery talking about how great the two of you are. Man, <laughs> Gregor, isn't he the best? Ooh, furball. Like, I really don't like people, but I love Gregor. He's amazing. Oh, Leo, that's... useful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, I, they're so talented. My goodness. I'm just, I'm really happy we've got them here. We're so lucky. Oh, I know I would have been dead by now for sure if it hadn't been for those two. Absolutely. I mean, not me, I would have survived, but like, <laughs> it would have been so much worse. <laughs> I would have had to kill so many more people, which honestly, I don't know if that's good or bad. Probably bad. It, it's bad. You should right. Killing is wrong, of course, <laughs> unless... <laughs> The other person is wrong. Yes, I agree. I hundred percent agree. Um, is there like um, is there a reasonable uh, expectation that we pass like um, like a pharmacy on the way by, so I can grab some hair dye? Um, yes. <laughs> Sorry, uh, a pharmacy, a drug store, if you will. Yes. A tabachi, I think they're called. I don't know. A general store. Um, high or low? Uh, low. Yeah, yeah, you find one. You encounter one. You can find what you need. Uh, excellent. And most Italians, dark hair, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not generalizing here, Megan. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I'd say um, generally, yes. Most most Italian people have dark hair. Okay, so I will. Um, the majority. Say. Dark brown it is. All right. Yeah. So you go to the counter and you start asking for something, and then they don't really understand you. Uh, you know, be like you know, uh, hair, paint. Um, trying to find a piece. Like I'll find something brown or or <laughs> thing behind the um, counter, and I'll point there. Be like. And um, I'll, I'll point out to uh, Sergeant Morris with the baby carriage out outside and be like, like, come on, you know, like, I have to look my best for my family. Where's my, where's your hair dye? We can do a reason. No, we can't, Matt. Um, <laughs> reason. Persuasion. I'm just looking at the most appropriate thing here. And it's going to be a two difficulty. Just like just like on the last one, it's only fair I did it for the last one. He did warn us if we speak in English, they're gonna hate us. So she doesn't quite oh, let me roll an, a roll for her as well, see what she kind of picks up or gleans from you. Do, do, do. Not a heck of a lot. So you're <laughs> saying things she picks up we got fourteen and eleven. She's like, she looks really confused. She's like furrowing her brow. She seems like she's getting frustrated with you. You're pointing your hair. You're pointing at your, uh, your, you, you're saying is your husband out there and his baby. She gets like, uh, like a baby bottle for you and puts it on the counter. She gets like, I'll, I'll just grab the baby bottle and, and give her some money and say, thank you. And leave. <laughs> thank you. Leave. Did you say <laughs> <laughs> well, she doesn't understand any of it. She just seems very frustrated and flustered. And uh, go ahead and make me a insight observation test as you're walking out. Please. One success. One success. That's all you need. Nice. Give, yourself, give yourself momentum. She breaks out a pad of paper and she's... You're looking at you and making looks like she's making detailed notes of some sort as you're walking out. Sergeant Morris, I seem to just just be just keep putting my foot in it. Let's get to the graveyard for the other two. Sorry, right, well, what what are you doing? Appar apparently, I'm trying to paint a gigantic, like glowing red uh, light on myself to to have the authorities come and pick me up. Let's just go to the graveyard. That's right. You, you know, who actually did get all the cops on them last time was me. So at least this time, you're not shit. I was shit last time. This time, you're not. You're great. You're golden. Don't worry about it. Oh, you're a better man than me for sure. Let's go. Technically, yes. But only on the technicality. <laughs> I, thought, I thought for sure you were going to send him in there to kill her. I thought, <laughs> like, Sean, and then they're onto us. And I could just imagine you smashing through the window with your shield <laughs> and taking her out. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Obvious. Um, sorry, that's where my mind is going because that's the way things are going. All right, so you guys now have a baby bottle and you're making your way down the streets uh, <laughs> towards the nearest cemetery. And Pavel and Leopold, you are as well. And uh, there's a lot of ruckus and, and excitement going on in the streets. Eventually, the four of you do meet up in this agreed upon cemetery in, uh, in Rome. Ah, Ruby. Sergeant Morris, that distraction that you uh, pulled off was excellent. We were able to get in and do some research. Good. It's exactly as we planned, of course. Your craft is is top notch. Is, uh, isn't that that? Is that not what your Americans say? Top notch. Exactly. It's all Ruby here. She's the mastermind. Amazing, really. Gosh. Do we, uh, do we see you bleeding, by the way, still? <laughs> I'm wearing a coat. <laughs> she does. She does have Sergeant Morse's coat over her. It is a warm, late August, September day. Uh, it is probably about midday right now. Are Are you gonna make me roll um, a first aid on myself, Matt? All right. Do you want to heal yourself? Do you want to? I want to, you know, like 
it, it grazed me, right? So I'm assuming that... Um... Yeah, you've lost... Yeah, you you don't have any wounds, but you will say, yeah, there is, like, uh, like a wound, per se. Like, there is blood coming out. So you, you can roll a first aid to just kind of, like, bandage it up and, like, clean the, the wound and such. And it's... Um, medicine what is it reason yes okay. one success one success is all you need you have momentum before you roll it oh you got it she rolled you're it. good you're good all right so um so ruby takes the coat off you see that she is bleeding and she pulls out some bandages and starts to clean and tend to the wound well very dedicated to uh to having distraction that is far more dedication that i would show in that situation did you see who it was who shot you lieutenant mckay i think i think i saw the gangster leo i think i did he had a long feather and he had a pistol and uh, he had a sore toe for sure i gave him a good stump I would guess that he is part of this Italian secret police force, would be my guess. Absolutely he was. He was about to arrest me, and I had objections to his request. I am very happy to see that uh, you successfully escaped his clutches. As am I, my friend. <laughs> As am I. <laughs> um, what? I suppose I, should, I ought to tell you as well. I stopped in at... Um, at the, the store to get some hair dye because I, I figured, gosh, I put our, ourselves into hot water again. Um, thought I'd change my appearance, but unfortunately, I didn't make myself very clear, and I, I fear she, she was starting to draw my image to show to the police, just so you know. On a scale of one to ten, how angry would you be if we shaved your head? I would say probably a three. Maybe just a hat. How would be fine? I, I mean, anything. That is, that is what I was thinking. Perhaps just a. I mean, Rome is a very large city. I think. Many people. Just a little disguise used yeah. to be very all right. Just you just change your profile. Like what somebody sees at a distance, the general outline of you. Which is why I'm screwed. <laughs> but we wish we, we should minimize our English. Apparently, this is a trigger for them here. Oh, 100%. Right. It is okay. Perhaps we make sure that at least Leo or myself is with one of you so we can at least speak German or some other language. Just to be sure. Be careful which teams we split up in. Well, the bright side is that Leo and I were able to take advantage of your brilliant, absolutely brilliant distraction, and we have numerous, uh, numerous things to tell you. Like, we have leads, we have strange prophecies to research, we have statues to visit. There are many, many places we could, we could follow up on right now. I like statues. Yes. Apparently, several of them are named very similar to some of the Section D operatives. I would recommend we look at this Pascavino's statue first. The Lu Lucija is clearly a more dangerous up uh, location to look at, based on the based on it being Mussolini's headquarters. Yes. That would probably be the one we say for last, I would say, <laughs> just to be sure. Yeah, looking at, so you, the two of you break out this tour guide that you've you've picked mm. up and show the rest of them, and, and you're all looking at it, it looks like they're all within this Palazzo Venezia, um, but specifically that one, the Lucharessa, is outside of his headquarter doors, but there's other courtyards within this Palazzo that you can you can go to that aren't, like, right outside, you know, Mussolini's window and see these other statues that are within there. And 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 so Pasquino's is also in this area. But you can easily locate them now that you you have a map showing you exactly where they are and where this Palazzo Venezia is. So we want to start are, with uh with Yeah, uh, if you are if you are healthy enough for it, uh Ruby, but should we go now? Or? Absolutely. This, this, this is just a scratch. Let's go. 
Fraulein, you do your country proud with your determination and stamina. Uh, I was just telling Pavel on the way over here how absolutely terrifying your Canadians are. Well, I guess thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. I will, I will make sure to do you proud. <laughs> It's true. I mean, some people have, I've heard them say it's very rude. I know it. They, they call them like America's hat. It's like a top hat, though, because it's the classiest, the toughest possible. I'm really sorry. Me as Jeremy is sorry. But Morris is a horrible person. <laughs> it's okay. Well, um... <laughs> Let's set uh, let's set my uh, my nationality aside, gentlemen, and carry on, shall we? <laughs> ah, as you wish, Fraulein. Yes, very okay, very okay. That's good. All right, so you guys head out. There are tourists even here in the cemetery. It's old. It's ancient. There are all sorts of notable uh, people buried here. There's also just really old, fancy headstones that people are taking pictures of and looking at and uh, you guys make your way back to the streets and you start making your way towards this palazzo of Venezia. and along the way you encounter like you don't like encounter encounter but you see that there are rome police roaming about they're they're dressed in a uh, gray trousers and a gray fitted jacket and you can see them kind of milling about being doing police officer type things you do also see the odd black shirt uh as you are around and it seems like Everybody's kind of has a heightened sense of like urgency and like awareness right now. Like everybody's kind of on edge as you're you're making way through the crowd. People aren't tourists are not really feeling this, but it seems like the locals are just like on edge all the time. Um, I'm going to give uh, Ruby my hat. Uh, Pavel wears a very beautiful hat. Very. Wide brim, colorful. It's a uh, Hungarian folk hat. I, I will hand it to uh, to Ruby. Uh, you can even have my colorful vest. So I'll take the vest off as well, if that would help, and can kind of cover the wound. If you do not want to wear the big jacket, that could help as well. You will look a lot like Pavel now, so I don't know if you, you know, you're committing to something here. Will this be? Um... Uh, which I'm gonna call it uh, will call more attention than my current uh, dress. Uh, well, the vest is only it's just a it's just a black vest, and then the hat is just black with like like colorful beads around the rim, and that's that's basically it. I have like more colorful like sashes and stuff like that, but that's still on my person. So you're it would, it would be basically black. It wouldn't be. Can I can I can I borrow one of your sashes as well? Uh, sure. Yes, yes, you can. Uh, sure. And so, yeah, I have. Yeah, and so again, yeah, he dresses like very flamboyantly, and so he will. Uh, he will. Yeah, you can have one of them. Awesome. So gonna... he, as he hands it over, by the way, he just doesn't, doesn't really let go of it as you go to grab it, and please, he does one of those, and then finally lets go. Thank you, thank you. And I'll, I'll gather up my dress and and fashion the sash around where the blood is. So that you can't see it from there. You look very European yeah. <laughs> right now. As you're tying it around your blood, I'm like, oh, my mother. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a completely misread the situation, sense the awkwardness, and just assume it'll make Pavel feel better for me to now take my coat and put it over him. <laughs> Pavel's not a very big guy, so it probably drapes over him as bad as does Ruby. Uh, thank you, Sergeant Morris. Uh, thank you very much. It's very, very kind. I don't really wear sashes. I would give you one if I had one. I would wear this if it wasn't Smother Gregor who is on my back, so I probably should give it back to you. Oh, okay, I don't want to smother the mom it. Yes. Is, and we, we do need to stop and get double cappuccino for him at some point. Not right now, not <laughs> later. Later, it's fine. But it's, I did promise him that. Double? Yes. That little guy. Very good. He did very good. He got this into the room, snuck around, opened the back door. Very useful. Between you and me, Gregor, you're my favorite. 
<laughs> He's playing around with some <laughs> melon that he has in the basket, like it's a head. <laughs> Maybe I gave him some old paint supplies, and so the inside of the wicker basket is just like splattered in paint. Just let him eat paint chips. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, lead lead filled paint. <laughs> right? Lead-filled paint. This is remember the era. This is lead paint filled oh. paint. All right. <laughs> That's how they get you. All right. So, uh you guys make your way to the Palazzo. Seeing as how Mussolini's uh current headquarters are located in here, there are black shirts uh posted at the doors, the gates to this this area. There are people coming and going, though. This is a tourist attra- a major tourist attraction. So there are, it seems, locals, tourists. People are coming and going in and out of here. It's not unusual at all. Nobody's being stopped. Nobody's being, like, hassled whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, you guys can just go ahead and enter and try and find the uh, Pasquino statue. And by try to find, use your tourist book to lead you right there, <laughs> if you like. Exactly. That's the plan. <laughs> and, of course, we're casually... I mean, you know, we're casually keeping our eyes peeled for anybody who's uh, tracking and targeting us. Yes. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, you guys make your way in. And there, are, there are tourists milling about everywhere, looking at things. They've all got, like, their own tour guides out, and they're looking and writing things down. Everybody's, ooh, yay, yay, look at this, cool. Uh, you eventually find your way to one statue. It's of a strange pockmarked figure of a reclining man whose head appears to be made of a different stone than the rest of its body. And it sits upon a rectangular trough of water and there's like um, a fountain uh, sp- just kind of like trickling water out below this, this rectangular base this man's sitting on and into the trough. And this is the one that um, is labeled uh, Pasquino. What does the tour what does the tour book say about this? Uh it says El Babuno is a statue you're looking for, and it supposedly represents Bacchus's favorite companion, Selenius. And don't ask me who those people are, because that's all the tour book gives you. But you do notice that the fountain, there are several coins on the ledge of the trough of the fountain piled up all over the place and you notice actually everybody make me an insight observation please insight observation as you're looking around and taking this in and looking the book and consulting yeah okay all you need is one success one success boom leo got it ruby got it it. um what everybody got it wow okay give yourself the momentum that you gained you clearly see that there is an oak leaf cut out of paper sitting underneath a, one of these large piles of coins. Now, there are people all around you. They're standing next to this thing. They're looking at it. So to reach down and take something that people have left as an offering might be kind of weird or out of place or seem odd. Someone may say something. But you Unless see a, you're leaf. a big dumb American that you can see... just look down like, oh wow, look at this. <laughs> it's it's one crazy. of these oak leaves. Yes, right there. How about wow. can I just subtly use telekinesis to grasp the oak leaf and pull it out from under the pile of coins? <laughs> Is there anything subtle about telekinesis? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it, it may topple the coins over, but says I can yes. I, I can grasp anything uh, with a difficulty equal to the target scale minimum one uh, up to half yeah. my power so I mean I could I can manipulate up to something the size of a of like a truck yeah and this is like a small paper leaf so yeah you could definitely grab it and pull it out uh, do you need to roll anything for this oh I do oh yeah okay yeah go ahead and roll this will be very easy you just want to like almost like pulling a tablecloth off of a table things on top of it right you just want to yank yeah, it out yeah. okay gotcha yeah, yeah. Kind of... okay and i'm going to use a point of momentum if that's okay with you guys or i hold on 
let me see if I can just do it as is. And if we're <laughs> successful, I could, we could use two momentum to introduce the truth that we did it without anybody noticing it. Nice. That's smart. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, man. oh yeah. Wow. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, while so you those, start huh. reach out your mind, start tugging. The, the coins start to like shake a little bit. It looks like so they're going to tumble and this leaf just subtly flies. Like it got caught in the wind and flitters off and towards you and nobody really notices, Leo. Let me uh, let me roll my drain here really fast. I soak all my drain, no problem. What? So. What? All right, oh, yeah, this my, thing my, just kind of like lands in your your pocket on your jacket. Yeah. We'll say. Yeah, my my courage is fourteen, so it's hard not for me for me not to soak stuff, but. But I did get two. Of, I I did get uh, damage too. Two effects on on the telekinesis. So, wow. Okay. So, so you have this leaf that is sitting here at the Pasquino. My friends, I do believe we have the clue in on my person as we speak. Perhaps we should just casually walk around the square and then retreat. Where'd the leaf go? <laughs> <laughs> I did notice a leaf. It was uh, floating on the wind somewhere. I mean, all right. You put your Charlie. hand in your pocket like to touch the leaf. On the English, eh? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good, good point. <laughs> yeah, you're outside. And Mussolini marches by, surrounded by guards. <laughs> um... Yeah, you put your hand inside your pocket, you feel the leaf in there. As you feel the leaf, it almost feels like there's small, many, many small indentations in it. Like I've been made into it. Almost like it feels like something's been etched on it, almost. You should definitely have to spend a little more time looking at this, I think. I'm saying this in German to Pavel. Uh, and yeah, I mean, can we look around for a... Uh... I mean, I, got, I would hesitate to go all the way back to, the, to our hotel right now or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Is there a place that we could find, like a like a park bench or two? There, yeah, casual? there's parks, there's cafes, there's restaurants, there's all kinds of places near here. It's a very busy tourist region, so you could you could find a bench or something Just somewhere. Yeah, like any other, yes, this sit here and take a look, pull it out, and someone could block vision. Our large American friend, perhaps. Yeah, I'll pretend I'm changing the diaper or something. God, Charlie, what's she feeding you? <laughs> Whatever that strange Italian woman gave me. <sighs> Who feeds the baby squid? Why? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? I don't know. I'm just making up stuff. Come on. <laughs> I keep just shh, we shouldn't be talking. They'll hear us. Okay, fine. I was trying to like yes and the situation. I'm really bad at this. Obviously, it's fine. Ugh. All right. Pass Wait, me. obviously, like obviously, I'm bad at it. I don't think you grasp. The, the, the severity of the situation, my friend. <laughs> Leo sees this, and he's going to once again try to link everyone's minds so we can stop talking out loud. And I'm going to spend one momentum, if that's okay with you guys, since I I, I fluffed it so bad the last time. And still don't succeed. So, uh, but... It's not meant to be. Not meant to be. The good not news been... is I'm so upset I'm going to pout and not talk for a while. <laughs> so you feel you feel Leo's mind reaching out to yours, and then for some reason he recoils, maybe in fear of what he sees inside the <laughs> minds of the North Americans. Who knows? Uh, oh. <laughs> All right. So you guys leave the Palazzo, and you go find a bench somewhere. So there's like a yes. there's a big fountain nearby and there's benches everywhere and there's people milling about and sitting, um, and so you just grab a bench, sit down, and pull out this leaf. Or what, how how do you want to approach this? Of course, 
Sergeant Morris is, is is going to block the wind in some sight, and you know, two of us could sit down. Mm. One could casually stand behind. I will, of course, give the seat to Ruby and Leo, and I shall linger behind, doing various calisthenic stretches behind the behind the, the bench, very casual, like most tourists do. And we'll pull out the tourist book and the map, and then we'll sure. have the leaf on top of it. So you know, it's we've got other things distracting. Probable points and you know, crinkle his forehead as if they're trying to figure out where they're supposed to go. Okay, <laughs> you guys are really playing the part. Uh, yeah, so you pull out this this leaf, and it looks almost like there's small little pinpricks all over it, and it's really jumbled, like it's really tight, and you can't quite make out what it forms. But it's it's intentional, and someone's put these on here, and it seems like. There's something possibly written on it, these pinpricks. It's hilarious as if somebody had a specialization in covert operations, you could just like deduce <laughs> what this is. Again, this is another Henri. Uh, I do have cryptography. Uh, I'll just say, like, as you're looking at studying it, you kind of hold it up to the sun a little bit to get a better view, and light shines through these, these pin holes or pinpricks. And it illuminates. You can clearly see that there is a message on there. Bear with me. There you go. You should see it. On the leaf, it says, What lies behind the truth that bites. And then there's almost like an etching of a man's face. A bearded face with long hair. It's weird. It looks like the hair and the, the, the beard almost have like kind of like claws in them crab-like claws you're not quite sure but there's not much like there's very little lack of space it's very clumped together it looks like someone did this to to hurriedly get a message along this, this is... I is behind the truth that might Could this be referring to uh, either the uh, uh, monuments to Romulus or Remus or the uh, the she-wolf that sucked them? That was my first thought, especially the bites. Uh, but then he said crab claws as opposed to like wolf claws or something of the sort. Which would sound more like uh, the Temple to Poseidon. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you think? Do you think? Or Neptune, I guess, technically in Rome. Right. Do you think there's I mean, more sleeps at the other statues? I mean, Perhaps. maybe they didn't really fight the wolf. Maybe like things really started more like ocean bank sort of sense. This could very well be the case. Perhaps we do need to try to gather more clues that may uh, may may provide more information for us. Maybe I can. Maybe we get to punch a giant crab. It'd be great. Um, so, I, I, Sergeant Morris, if anyone can do it, it would be you. No crab meat's delicious. It's just such a pain to eat. I really hate deshelling them. <sighs> is that? Is yeah. there any role we could do for the phrase? What lies behind the truth? I'll like, tell is it, is it like you a, what. Is it there's some kind of phrase we could do? You, know, you like could do an insight. Academia? A cult I'll give you it? academia. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'll give that a cool. Me too. Um, one difficulty for Leopold and um, Pavel, two for anybody else who wants to try. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So, Leopold and. Say Leopold, you recognize somewhat this 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 face that's etched in there seems familiar, and you swear you saw it in the book. And as you mentioned it to Pavel, he agrees, and he starts flipping through this book. And you guys eventually come to a page that shows a giant stone mask, um, known as the Mouth of Truth, here in Italy, located in the por Porticcio of the Church of Santa Maria in Cosmodine. Uh, and looking at this guidebook, it's a massive giant stone face. Uh, and legend says that uh, 
Nobody knows who it belongs to. Uh, that it's very odd, very old. Uh, some claim it is oceanous because of its four odd-looking crab claws on his head and in his beard. And others think that it is Tiburnius, the spirit of Tiber, uh, who saved Romulus and Remus. Both of whom are also candidates for the true identity of Morfino, or M Marforio, which was another name that came up. Uh, and it is also said that anyone that puts their hand in the mouth of the statue and then tells a lie has their hand bitten off in retribution. So are, are we going to go stick our hand in a statue's mouth? No! Well, I kind of want to. I mean, <laughs> I think I, obviously we we'll tell a lie, but gosh... I do believe that we must go investigate this. The clue There's does something. seem to be leading us in that direction. There's something behind it, so we must either reach our hand within or we go behind. <laughs> But clearly, it seems it's something we have to do. There's a choice. I'm doing the reach round instead of fisting it. <laughs> <laughs> your, your colloquialisms uh, have a lost on me, my friend. But I believe we can approach it however you think is best. Shall we go? <laughs> of course. Yes. Yes. I'm going to pick up some cappuccino on the way. A double, double cappuccino for Gregor. Double cappuccino for Gregor. Very good moment. <laughs> Jonathan's left is all speechless. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think so you head off. Double two. <laughs> He's like pouting for 20 minutes and then he comes out with that. And you just... There you go. You stop at a cafe along the way. They don't really have takeout cups, you know, back. At this time, so you have to sit there and sip your cappuccino if you'd like. Maybe flip through the book some more, deduce what you want to do. This stone statue is like six feet tall. It's huge. Um, but another tourist attraction, so there's going to be a lot of people about. You're losing... Well, you're not losing daylight, but the day is 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 moving on. It's probably uh, 3 p.m. at this point. So a lot of these sites that are tourist attractions are going to start letting up in, in people being around them. Which has been a good cover. There's been a lot of people around you, right? You don't haven't you haven't stuck out. So keep that in mind as the day moves on. The tourists will disappear for the uh, remainder of the day and come back out tomorrow, as well as the locals. Remember, it was a Thursday, so tomorrow will just be another regular day. But you sip your cappuccinos, your doubles, if you will, and you head to the Santa Maria in Cosmedine. Hmm. So many names. All right, so you guys want to head straight there? Yes. Okay, you guys head there. It's a big building. It's unusually tall. It's made of red brick. And it has a large Romanesque bell tower at the top of it. The, the architecture is different here on this place. Uh, and uh, nestled uh, on the left-hand side... Of this this building appears to be the uh, broken uh, capital of an ancient Corinthian column sitting there, some plain sight. So you have all this ancient history all around you in Rome as you wander around, and uh, on that column you see the uh, fabled mouth of truth. And it's a broken column. This mouth of truth is just sitting there near this column. Is there anybody else around? Or? There are people milling about. There are people looking at also. Other tourists are kind of like getting up close and looking at it. Nobody, I, people aren't wandering around with cameras per se at this point. So they're not taking their picture with it. But there are people like observing and appreciating the architecture of, of not just this, but of the chapel and of the, the old column itself and everything around here. The old Corinthian column. Uh, any signs of like OVRA, black shirts, anything like that? Uh, well, the OVRA are, are, are pretty discreet in okay. their, like, they don't wear uniforms. There are Rome police milling about, again, with the, the black jackets, or sorry, the gray jackets and the gray shirt, uh, pants. 
Uh, and I'd say, yeah, there are a few black shirts milling about here and there. It was quite a busy area, especially around this, this church. Are there, like, any specific signs about, like, don't touch this, or is mm. there... Is there are, if, if there are, you don't understand them, they're in Italian. I know, but, like, you would know that it would be a sign. Do you know what I mean? Like, it would, there would be a sign next to it, probably an arrow, like, with an exit. Do you know, like, we would know it would be a sign not to touch it. You don't see any signs around the Mouth of Truth statue. Like I said, this thing's, like, six feet tall, 1.8 meters high. It's, it's big. It's not small. You see these odd crab-like claws now in person on it. Really stands out. Bizarre. Much, much older than anything else around it. The stone of this statue. Just standing there, you guys, without having to roll anything or get too close, I'll give you like a cursory check. Just, just kind of walking around this area. It looks like the mask, there's really nothing behind it. And the statue lies flush to the wall. And um, given its size and probably its weight, it's unlikely you'd probably be able to move it. And in, in investigating or looking closer around it, uh, do, do we see any signs that any other notes or any other kind of ciphers have been hidden in the area? Or do we need to like feet? Stick a hand in the mouth and feel around for something. Uh, you can stick a hand in the mouth <laughs> and feel All around. Right. It's probably your I'll best approach. Yeah, so you walk up. Are you going to tell a lie with your hand in there? You walk up. No. You put your hand in. Some other people, like tourists, like, ooh. They kind of smile and look at you, and you put your hand in there. Yeah, he does not lie. You know? Leo, Leo is not lying. Sure. He's so you... seen too many weird things in the world to think that there might not be a <laughs> grain of truth to this. Damn it, I thought I was going to take your hand. No. <laughs> you start feeling around, and there's... Feel, there's like some pebbles back there, but um, it's you don't feel any like pieces of paper or like paper leaves or anything like that. There doesn't seem to be anything back there. Hmm, very interesting. And as he's as his hand as Leo's hands in there, he's looking at the statue and around the statue just to see if there's any other. You know, if, if the mouth is a distraction, maybe he's left some other cipher or some other clue in the vicinity of the statue that you might notice mm, by your hand. Yeah, make me a... Ba, ba, ba. Insight observation. I've had a lot of those tonight. Yeah, you're good. You only need one success. You're sitting there, you got your hand in there, and you look over to your left. And remember, this is sitting beside this big, giant basilica, and you see people coming and going, and it, you kind of get the idea, like, maybe maybe there's more in there. Maybe this is just kind of like the the thing to look the for. Yeah, the landmark once we're here. And you can see the doors. People are coming and going, and you, you look inside as they open. You see this big, ancient, immaculate basilica. Uh, beside you, and you can just get a glimpse inside the doors. So he, Leo pulls his hand out and gets closer. I think perhaps that this was simply a, a guide post to lead us here to the Basilica. Perhaps we need to go inside and take a look around. Huh? All right. Yeah. Let's go. Cool. So you guys enter... You swing the door open, your eyes sort of adjust. It's really, really dark in here, and your eyes are used to the light, so you kind of adjust a little. It's hard to see. It's really, really black in here, and you kind of rub your eyes, and you look around, and when you enter to the left and right of the, the doors are columned aisles, and in the left-hand aisle, there are two small chapels and a, a baptistry, and the baptistry lies closest uh, to the mouth. Uh, but um, you scan around, there's people sitting in pews and in the aisles, but you're kind of looking and scanning, and nothing's really standing out as you kind of stand here at the entrance. Uh, do you want to kind of search and scan this, this giant basilica? Start looking around for clues while you're in here? Yeah. Okay. Leo would move over towards the uh, baptistry. Okay, we'll do insight. Oh, I don't want to do observation. That's all we've been doing tonight. Uh, 
what it's all about. Yeah, inside observation. Yeah. These are like our library. Uh, let's go to the library for the next couple hours and make library rolls. Uh, one success is all you need. So any extras, please go ahead and throw them in the momentum pile. All right. Added them. We're up to three now. Oh, three. Okay. Uh, four now with Megan. <laughs> right? Right? Everybody crawls inside the demon statue's mouth and dies. <laughs> Nobody wanted to tell a lie. I was hoping somebody would tell a lie. I was considering it. <laughs> I was going to tell the statue it was very handsome. <laughs> so he probably is everything he says. So whether it's true or not. So very complicated <laughs> situation there. <laughs> Ruby, Leopold, Pavel all get two successes. Um... But, you know, Jonathan, you've never seen anything like this. You're just, like, in awe. Maybe you kind of sit down in one of the pews and just kind of, like, look all around you. At this Legitimate whoa. <laughs> uh, as you're all kind of, like, looking around, you have the, the guidebook out and the tourist book, and you're looking at things, you're all consulting with one another. You all kind of zero in. You turn around towards the door you came in, and you notice that... On either side of the door are two niches in the front wall of the church. And they're jet they're jet black stones that are kind of like inset uh, in these niches. They're kind of they're sticking out. And it looks like like these stones have obviously been shaped by man, but like they don't really seem to to line up with the rest of the architecture or the rest of the look of this 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 basilica that you're in. And it catches your eye. And we'll say with your double successes, you kind of like look these up in the tourist book. And you, you read up on these things. And it looks like um, the legend has it that these things, these two stones were used to beat pagans' heads against until they converted to Christianity in the past. And for whatever reason, because these things catch your attention and your double successes, you get the urge to stick your hands into the niches behind them. The reach around. <laughs> the reach around. Sure. We'll reach in and there. And sure. and whoever does that produce feels something paper like back there. In both niches? In one of them. Okay. Would this would this <laughs> stone resemble um the uh the black stone of the figure? Is it it does resemble that type of stone. It's very similar. And that's what caught your attention looking at it. Is this is because that others you've never seen anything like that other stone, these two caught your eye. Um whoever's feeling back there yeah. produces this Probably. leaf, but you also feel something else, some more paper back there after, oh. when you're feeling around you pull this leaf out. Looking at the leaf and you hold it up to like one of the the the, the lanterns that are lit in here. Um, it doesn't look like there's any sort of message on this one, mm -hmm. but you What's also the rest of the paper, though? feel back there, and you feel and you produce an envelope. Oh, like uh, letter size, large envelope. I think that there's something other than yes, paper. letter size, nice. letter size, and let's shall you take a look in here? Should we sit down at one of the pews and take a look? No, I'm gonna keep this to myself. No, okay. It's just All right. For, yes, of course. This is a good <laughs> place to sit. <laughs> We're almost at the end of the session here, so we'll uh, we'll take a look at this here. Show to players. It says P taken to Regina Coley, moved to Santa Road Clue. Oh man, archaeologists present. Archaeologists present appears to be looking for something. Germans have arrived. Strange badge on uniform. Bodies from the site taken to Tiber Island Hospital. Uh, I don't know what that word is at the end there. And situation escalating. Sent for help. So we've got Regina Coley moved to Sisanta Road Crew. And we also have uh, Tiber Island Hospital that is mentioned in this note. Hmm. Now... Da, 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 da. Anyone who has knowledge of Latin 
This is written in here in this hey, adventure. Hey, look at that. We'll know That's that the useful. words Regina Coley mean Queen of Heaven. Oh. And if you make me a Reason Academia roll, we get some further information here. Okay, okay. One success, is one this... success. Okay, Reason Academia, my reason. Sucks. Actually, it's, yeah, it's, go for it. Uh, sure. Bah. <laughs> you know, with your knowledge of Latin and some knowledge of Rome and flipping through this book, you know. I know everything. Rome. <laughs> uh, the ro words Regina Coley mean something far more than that. And you saw the the a, a prison, a prison that had the same name, a notorious prison on the west bank of the Tiber. Uh, and in your little book, you flip to it. They were originally built as a convent. It became a place of incarceration in the late 19th century. And since Mussolini has taken control of Italy, he has used the Goel to inter... Uh, it holds interpolitical prisoners there right now. Literally okay. one of our colleagues. It seems as... Yeah, it looks like it's Pasquino Nicky. I think was his nickname. Nikki. Is that who we think it is? Was taken to this prison? Indeed. You also have the Castel Sant'Angelo. We can look up in your book, which is a place. Uh, you look that up in your book. The imposing syndrical fortress. You have a picture of it. Uh, looks like it was built as a tomb for the Emperor Hadrian and his family before it was converted by the popes into a castle in the 14th century. There have been a lot of roadworks in the area for the last three years or so as Mussolini builds a triumphal way between the tomb and St. Peter's. Hmm. So, we're going to leave it off there. We have two possible places to go next time. We've got this, this castle that is having some roadwork done at it. And we've also got this um, prison for political prisoners to check out. We may be doing a prison break after all. Yeah, look yes. at this. This is what we do. We get Jonathan to go to prison, and he breaks them out from the inside. <laughs> oh, and I'm sorry. We are at Tiber Island. Tiber Island sits on a bend of the river, after which it is named, close to the Boca della Vierta. Uh, it is the site of a Basilica de San Bartomoleo, something or other, and that of a newly rebuilt and refurbished hospital we've got three places to check out a hospital prison and uh mm -hmm. another place so we got to figure out between castle. sessions where we want to go a castle which one we want to go castle wolfenstein obviously yeah, but... <laughs> oh, oh castle oh. wolfenstein what <laughs> I, the I, got, I got jeremy's attention <laughs> okay that's <laughs> that's it for this week um so around table jeff what do you got going on between now and next week thursday uh, let's see. Tomorrow night, we're not doing anything. Uh, Saturday, we got One Ring Second Edition. Monday, we'll be doing Deadlands over at twitch.tv slash the lollygaggers. You can see uh, Matt and Jeremy in the, the Deadlands game. Monday night. We'll be there. Uh, Megan, how's your board game crusade going? You were like, well, I was talking about this today with a, a mutual friend, with Bill. Aren't you going through like the top 100 board games or something like that? Like you have a list you're, you're going through. I so I'm, I have some time off here, and um, unfortunately this past week I have been otherwise engaged. Um, however, uh, going forward, yeah, I, I got a, the top 100 um, uh, basic board games of all time to conquer in the next uh, five weeks. Five so, weeks? <laughs> I, I got this. Are these modern board games or like a mix? Like it's like sure. you'll, you'll have like checkers and chess and Monopoly in there, but you'll also have like... Like there's risk in there, and there's mm. uh, uh, was it there's sorry in there, stuff like that. It's just they're they're pretty basic board games. But I thought, um, like I said, I'm gonna have some time on my hands, so might as well do something constructive with it. Cool. I picked up a new one for our group to play this past week: Apocalypse Road. A little bit of racing and Mad Max car shooting will be fun. Bill seemed excited by it uh aaron what do you got going on between now and next week see uh tomorrow here on garblag games on the uh 
British times, so that'll be 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We've got more of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition, The Enemy Within. So that'll be fun. Uh, and uh, Ben is bringing back uh, Blessed uh, Annika, his uh, War Priest of Myrmidia from the original playthrough of that. Then on Tuesday, they're uh, running Coriolis at the same time. Uh, next Wednesday, we are back uh, at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time for some Wrath and Glory. And then Thursday uh, is Cyberpunk. And then Thursday night, we'll be back here for Starfinder. Starfinder. Yes. Jeremy, tell me about this Patreon. Yeah, Aaron Reese on Patreon. You've got comic books, you've got art, you've got uh, art, uh, RPG assets, maps, lots of fun stuff. Very, very cool. And like Jeff said, I will be over on the Lollygaggers, uh, twitch.tv, the Lollygaggers on Monday night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time for some Deadlands. And we'll be back next Thursday. And that's it for us. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Thursday. Bye.